Hello, 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 fan base. This is your boy, the Green Talents, coming at you all with a video that is specifically pertained to what happened the last three days, Thursday, Friday, and today. Um, got me old drink here that, that I've been drinking out most of the day while enjoying the 2020 NFL draft that just actually ended a couple of hours ago. And I got my uh, paperwork right here, as you can see. But before I get to that, I want to show you guys this one, one, one more last time. This here is the, um, let's just say it's just something that I showed you guys back here uh, a week or two ago. I made a video on this. This is the, um, the 2020 NFL Draft Magazine. Of course, you guys remember that. As you can see, um, on the front cover there, you got um, Barrow and you got um, Tutua. These two guys were drafted um, number one and three, respectively, by the Miami Dolphins. Um, so, I'm showing you all this because this, this is going to be the last time that I show you this card. This is now officially going into the vault which means that it would no longer be seen no more this year. When I say vault, that's that, 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 that definitely what I meant. It would no longer be seen no more this year. So I'm going to put this in this pack that it originally came out of right there. All right, that's going to the vault today. But with that being said, This is something that this here is my um, tablet. This is where I keep most of my information pertaining to the NFL or whatever sport that I'm watching, and I keep everything locked in on this book here. But today is the, like I said, the NFL draft with Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, there are some players that were picked that, that had uh, quite a few question marks in the beginning. And then some of you guys are still ticked off just a little about a certain individual that were picked early in the rounds. And there's some guys that were picked that you guys still have question marks on. I'm going to get those guys later on in this um, broadcast or this video, if you may will. So, with that being said, before I get to that, um, if you guys remember, between the... It happened today, I will say about on with to today was the um the fourth through the seventh rounds between the fourth and the fifth round, the Eagles made a trade with the 49ers. And they picked up the guy named Marquise Goodwin, who is was a uh, former four, I think a fourth or fifth round pick by the um it wasn't the 49ers. I forgot which team that it was, but this guy left that team and went to the 49ers. Signed a one-year contract, and then before that, we signed him to a three-year deal. I think back 2000 and I think 19, or it might have been 18, it was a three-year deal. And so with that being said, the Eagles reworked or restructured his contract. I think the contract is for one year, $1.3 million, but he can get up to another million with incentive, which means playing time. If he go well over, I said five five hundred yards receiving, I think he'll get that one million back, along with the one million that was agreed upon with on the one year contract. And so the Eagles traded for this guy. Um, they got him, and they gave away a um, six round pick. Which was one to sit with 190 overall. The Eagles, that was, that, was, that was the Eagles' original pick, but they trade that pick along with the trade with Marcus Goodman. So the Eagles get a 210. If you get what I'm saying, I get, I get what I'm saying is with the trade with Marcus Goodman, the uh, the four downs had gave, gave the Eagles Marcus Goodman and a two uh, and a 210. Pick 
for the 190th pick, which was a six round pick. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, a lot could be said and none about this because I think it was a good, um, a good trade because for the simple fact that instead of us staying where we were at 190, we dropped down to 210 and we got Marky Goodwin, which is a veteran receiver. I think he's like 29 years old at this time. Uh, so a one year deal is pretty much adequate for 1.3 million and then what another million in incentives based on playing time. So like I said before, if he get if he gets over 500 yards receiving, he get that 100 million back. It's like he never lost no money in the first place. But it is a restructured deal, so the Eagles save like three or four million in cash base when he restructured his contract. And with that being said. Now they can go ahead and get to the draft picks. And also, the Eagles were able to sign some rookie free agents. I, I think they did between 10 and 12 restricted, you know, unrestricted free agents, or, sh or should I say rookie free agents. The guy that was a pick between the first and the seventh round, these were some guys that were left out in the streets. The Eagles were able to get them signed um, to minimum deals. I, I, I think like rookie deals, I think that's what it is. So... I mean, but come to find out with the uh, new CBA that that's now in effect, instead of the instead of Eagles keeping 50, 53 men, the Eagles will be can go be keeping three extra men, which is 56. So of them 12, of them, of them between 10 and 12 rookie free agents that they signed, only three of those guys are going to make the roster. And maybe the remaining ones alone, if they decide to keep these guys or not, and let them the street where other teams can sign them, they can go ahead and get other guys that other teams released and add them to the practice squad. So, yeah, I think it did. I, I, I think the practice squad still remains at eight. So, of those twelve, like I said, of, of those twelve, only three can make the roster, and the and the rest of them will either be there on a practice squad or they have been left out on the streets where other teams can grab them and add them to their roster or add them to the practice squad. So it can so it worked either way for our team and for other teams along the free agent market that are already set right now with a bunch of other guys that, that haven't been re-signed to other teams, other words, veterans. So when when them guys are still on the street and haven't signed one other team. That means that if a player on another team gets hurt, then the team can go out and sign that guy and have, have, have sign him to a one year deal and he'll be a replacement for the guy that they lost on the on, on original roster set for this year. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started now with this um with this draft thing and the rookie free agent class that the Eagles have signed. I'm going to go ahead and start with this right now. So, But the first pick the Eagles had, um, they were, they wanted to get C.D. Lamb, but the Cowboys was like three notches or two notches above us. So they grabbed the guy that we were going to get later on in the draft. A lot of people thought that the Eagles should have moved up to get him. But instead, they stayed put at 21 and got this guy here, um, Jalen Rager. He, he is a wide receiver from TCU. That's Texas Christian University, in case you guys don't know. Um, 5'11", 205 pounds. And he was picked with the 21st pick in the first round. Now, that's one, that's one of the picks that kind of bothered everybody because, like I said before, they wanted to get... C.D. Lamb, but a lot of people also thought that we since we didn't get C.D. Lamb, they could there were other guys that, that, that they could have got like Denzel Mims or they could have got Judy, but Judy wound up going as soon as they even got Jaden Rager, Judy went two or three spots later on in the first round to um was it the Dolphins? I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not gonna pick a lot of you guys, but all I know is like two or three notches down in the first round. So the Eagles could have had Jerry Judy. So I guess they thought Jerry Judy wasn't their character guy or wasn't their guy to fit on their roster. 
So that's why they didn't go with him. But they, they went with a fast, speedy guy in Jaden Rager. And, and from what I've been told, the guy runs a 4.3 um, dash. He did this at the um, senior, at, at, at the um, Indianapolis Combine. So the Eagles got him because he had speed. The guy here, um, I mean, if you look at the way he plays, his playing style, he kind of reminds you of J-Mac. J Mac with Deshaun Jackson's speed. And uh, so, this guy, I mean, like I said before, a lot of people had their question marks about this guy. Like I said before, y'all guys wanted CD Lamb. I did too. You know what I'm saying? But the Cowboy was two or three, nothing, not just ahead of us. So, nothing, nothing we could do with that. And um, my mind was bogging about this, about this, um, about this guy. And, um, I don't know what to say or what to think, but I hope that he can get on the field, stay healthy, and play with the Eagles for the long run because I'm not sure how the Eagles are going to use him. Like I said, he's 5'11", you know what I'm saying? So he didn't get him lined up all over the field. What I mean, what I mean by that, I mean is he can line up in both slot positions or he can line up on one of the outside spots or he can come out the backfield with the uh, with the ball in hand, so I mean, in many ways, the youth is guy, and I believe the Eagles are going to do that going forward. You know what I'm saying? So I can't wait to see what the Eagles are going to do with this guy. But anyway, the uh, second pick, um, number fifty three, um, <laughs> um, this was a head scratcher to me, and. A lot of you guys thought the same thing about this particular pick. Um, this big one that, that I was saying that I'm gonna uh, that I'm gonna get with you guys as soon as I can when this guy's name comes up. Um, this is um, Jalen Hurts, played University of Oklahoma, but before Oklahoma, he was with Alabama, where he lost the starting job to um, to Tua. Who was drafted in the first round, way up, way up in the upper, in the upper elons of the first round? You know what I'm saying? And um, but when I kind of did my research on this on this guy, I thought about it. Um, if you guys are quite aware, the New Orleans Saints have a quarterback that's 29 years old, about 30. His name is Tyson Hill. The Saints use this guy in all over the formation. They use him at tight end. They use him at wide receiver. They use him at um, they use him as a running back out of the backfield. I mean, um, they use the guy all over the place. It, it's like it, it's like he's a big tight end or a big H back in the backfield. Like I said, he can line up, he can, he, 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 he can line up on the line of scrimmage like a tight end. I mean, the guy is amazing what the Saints use with him. And I believe the Eagles are going to do the same formations with Jaden um, Hurts. He's a quarterback, 6'2", 228 pounds, um, 53 pick in the second round. I mean, head stretching. I thought long and hard about it. Like I said, did my research, and I kind of like the pick. And, um, they're going to dial some plays for this guy. He go play some quarterback, I'm sure of it. And he go probably play some wildcat, I'm sure of it too, because if you guys remember, when um, Greg Ward got off the practice squad and won the game against the Washington Redskins or the Giants, I think it was the Giants game, the Eagles used Greg Ward as a wildcat quarterback. And at, least, at least we forget. Greg Ward was a quarterback in college, but when he got out of college, he was um one he wanted to play receiver or he was asked to play receiver. And so he done been on one team on, on one football club, got released. The Eagles claimed him off waivers. They put him on their practice squad for I think like two years. And um uh, he'd been back and forth off the Eagles, the fifty three man roster at the time. And it, like the time he got released, he went up on the practice squad. So no team having touched him. And so this past season, 
Great War came out on fire. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of us knew that Great War should have been off the practice squad a long time ago. When Deshaun Jackson got hurt back in week two against the Atlanta Falcons, he should have been off the practice squad then. He even waited a long time late in the season to actually get Greg Wolf off the practice squad. So he should have been released then. I think I think had he been released then, his numbers probably would have been better. Because he got like 200 some yards uh, receiving, and I think, I think like two touchdowns is what I believe. And they also and I, and I want to say he scored a touchdown in the um, playoff game that we lost against the um, the Seattle Seahawks. So I mean, a lot of that kind of paid tribute to the reason why we lost in the first place. If Gray War had been off the practice squad earlier, like I said, when when DJ got hurt, it would probably have been a, a different scenario. He could probably would have made into the second round instead of losing the first round to the Saints. And um. I mean, you never know what could happen. It is what it is. Shit happens, it comes and it goes. Um, like I said, the Jaden Hurts situation was tough to swallow because we didn't know what the Eagles were thinking when they got Jaden Hurts um, in the draft, 53 overall of uh, the University of Oklahoma. Okay, the third round, number, number 103 overall. The Eagles drafted Davian Taylor from um, University of Colorado. The guy is 6'1", 225 pounds. Um, he's a linebacker. And this guy is extraordinarily fast. I've seen the footage on this guy. This guy is really, really fast at linebacker. So I'm not sure exactly what they're going to put him at, where they're going to place him, either in the middle or they're going to put him on one of the outside spots. I believe he's going to be on one of the outside spots because he does have the ability to cover on one of the outside spots. Because we all know that Nate Garrett on the strong side, and that's on the left. The weak side is the one that's open. So he's more likely to compete for the weak side long, the weak side linebacker position. And the guy flies around like an NFL safety. Um, he wears number 20. And we all know that B Dog is the reason number 20 um, of the Philadelphia Eagles. And I don't think he's going to be wearing 20 because number 20 has been retired two years ago when Brian Dawkins retired as an Eagle. Got just retired and went to the Hall of Fame the same year that he won a, that he, that he up the team won the Super Bowl. He finally got his elusive ring. And now he's living comfortably because he was on the executive squad at one point. But he just had to leave and he won a Super Bowl. So, I mean, B Dog, nothing more I can say about that guy. He's he won, he's, he's one of the originals. He's 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 also the free safety that changed the position because he was Brian Dawkins revolutionized the free safety position when he got drafted in the second round back in 96. You know what I'm saying? So, he the reason why now safeties are going first round. He the reason why. And no question about it. But this guy here, Devin Taylor, though, like I said, I, they, 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 they got him lift that linebacker, but I believe he could play some safety, too, because of the way he fired around the football field. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Jim Schwartz is going to do with this guy because this guy is fast. And now the fourth-round pick, number 100, number 145 overall, he's a tackle and guard. His name is Jack Driscoll. Jack Driscoll is 6'5", 305 pounds from the University of Auburn. Now, um, this guy's a senior. Uh, he was predicted to go higher than that, but the Eagles, I think the Eagles got a steal when they got this guy. Like I said, he played tight, he played guard, and from the way, in the way the little thing, I said he's probably going to play guard. I'm not quite sure exactly because when the Eagles let Vitae go to the um, Detroit Lions, the Eagles needed to, to find an offensive tackle or guard to cover, to replace him. And so they got that guy in Jack Driscoll, who is 6'5". You know what I'm saying? Dude, he's 6'5", 205 pounds. And from what I've seen on footage, he's pretty fast at the point of attack when it comes to, to knocking down or blocking flat up. He could want to be the starter. But like I said before, he's going he go, he go to take one, one, one of the guard spots. Because Brandon Bruce mind the one on the left. So... The right guard spot 
fifth one is wide open. So he might want to um, compete for that left guard, I mean, that right guard spot. So we'll see how that works out. And uh, if you guys remember also, after Jack Driscoll was drafted, the Eagles made a trade with the most hated rival in the entire NFC East, the Dallas Cowboys. The Eagles traded pick number 46, which was the pick after after the after that that we picked in the first pick, 145. The Eagles had two fourth round picks, but they traded one to the Dallas Cowboys and uh for pick number 164, which was later in the fourth round. So we didn't lose nothing. But a fifth round pick had has not been named yet. So we're not quite sure exactly which fifth round pick the Cowboys is gonna gain next year. So whatever the whatever the fifth round pick the Cowboys get next year to twenty one, that pick will be owned by the Eagles because they swap picks and they they, they got the one sixty four pick and a fifth round pick. So so the Cowboys kinda pay for that. Pay for that one. So the Eagles next year should have two fifth round picks. Which will give them ammunition to move up in the fourth or the or, or, or the third to get the guy that, that, that they want, or they can get some picks together, get some players together, and move up in the draft. So you never know what they're gonna do with these draft picks that, they, that they're getting now. So it's all good. And the fifth round pick, one sixty eight overall. Uh, the Eagles drafted John Hightower, a wide receiver, which is 6'1", 189 pounds from Boise State. Now, Boise State is not known for a lot of their first round picks, but I'm gonna say this right here: the last pick that I can recall that was drafted from Boise State was that linebacker the Cowboys took from us in the first round. Um, he got hurt. No, did he? He got hurt last season. Um, so somewhere late, somewhere earlier in the weeks of last season, got hurt, and he was out for. For, for the rest of the year after that, so I forgot that boy name, but the Eagles was getting to, to to draft that boy in the first round, but the Cowboys jumped us, jumped up and got that guy, which led to us jumping their ass the same year to get um, Dallas Goddard. So what goes around comes around, and um, both like I said, like I said the, the guy's wide receiver, he's. He has adequate speed. I think I think he was a four point forty seven. What I believe, what I seen on TV earlier today. So he had pretty good speed at wide receiver. So um, that was a pretty good, a pretty good decent pick because I said the Eagles need to get at least two or three more receivers. And later on, they picked up one more after this one. I mean, after one more after this, but further on into the rounds. Um, with the sixth round pick, the Eagles picked up Sean. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. Sean Bradley, who is a linebacker with from Temple. He's 6'1", 235 pounds from Temple. Now, linebacker. I'm actually glad the Eagles are actually stacked up on linebacker because we need some. Um, they had the chance to get a first to get a linebacker in the second round, but they but they got that pick and they picked up um, Jaden Hurts. With that one, and I felt that a linebacker should have been drafted in the second round, instead later, instead that later on in draft, like the fifth round. You know what I'm saying? If they had got, if they had get, if they had drafted a linebacker in the second round, it, it would have been better quality. So, um, I'm not saying that Sean Bradley is a is a bad pick. The guy, um, 235 pounds, he, he he's a light linebacker for his size, so he's probably pretty fast as well. You know what I'm saying? But since one. It's a small linebacker. I like my linebacker bigger. But it, it is what it is. But anyway, Sean Bradley, linebacker, he worked at Temple, 6'1", 235 pounds. And the Eagles picked up another receiver in the sixth round. He had three six-round six picks. Another, they picked another receiver um, out of our University of Southern Miss. I'm talking about Quiz, Quiz Rock Watkins. With a 200 pick overall, the pick Sean Bradley with 196, then got hit with 200 in the same in the same draft, sixth round, um, six feet, 185 pounds, University of the Miss. Now, um, like I said, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. The Eagles are thinking on wide receiver because they won't get some speed on the offensive side of the football because the 
Re reason why, because see, Carson Wentz likes getting the ball out, out of his hands quite in a hurry. So when you get receivers with these, with these type of qualities to, to get downfield or to cut routes in a hurry, uh, Wentz can get the ball out without getting hit or sacked or beat up or knocked down on, on the back end of the field. So this is also a good pick too. Wide receiver, University of the Miss, Quez Watkins. Now, with the sixth pick, of 2020 NFL Draft, the Eagles picked, uh, you know what? This guy, I'm going to say he is a, what you call a project, but he had the ability to become better as the years progress. And so, um, we got one, we got one of the best offensive line coaches in the NFL. And I think he's going to, I think he's going to have a good time Showing them boy how to play offensive tackle. And this is Prince Tago Renaho. Prince Tago Renaho. He is an offensive tackle from the University of Auburn. Um, 6'5, 305 pounds. Now, if you guys seen the commercial on NFL Network, they were showing this big heavy set guy, University of Auburn. And he would and he he was narrating his own commercial, talking about where he came from and how it would be wonderful to get drafted in the NFL where the guy dream came true. If you if you remember the commercial, go back and check it out, or you can Google it or you can YouTube it. The commercial is somewhere on the internet and it might be still on TV if you can catch it. But um this guy gonna be pretty good. Like I said, he gonna be a project. So the Eagles are gonna, gonna, gonna have to work with him. And like I said, we got one of the best offensive tackles on the, the offensive line coach in the NFL. And uh, I think he's going to do wonderful with this guy. So he got something to work with as well. And last but not least, the seventh round pick. This guy here is a linebacker, and he has very, very decent size. And I've been saying this for years and years and years. The last linebacker the Eagles had that was 64 was Stuart Bradley from University of Stanford. Um, he didn't last long in the NFL, like three or four years, because he played linebacker, middle linebacker for the Eagles, not only once but twice. When he got hurt the, his second year, he got he got hurt at one of the events the Eagles had back in 2019, somewhere along I've been there. Um then he came back the third year, and he wasn't the same linebacker. So the Eagles let him go after the third year. What I believe, I think the Eagles released him, and he wound up playing for the Cardinals for two years. So, so he's been leaving about six years now, six years then. But he's been long retired from the NFL because he has not recovered from the injury that he had something back in the early, early years of his career with the Philadelphia Eagles. But this guy here named him Casey. Two Hill, Casey Two Hill, Casey Two Hill, from University of Stanford. Same quality, you know what I'm saying? From uh, 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 um, Stuart Bradley, University of Stanford. Got University of Stanford. Where he's a linebacker. The guy is six four. Wow, six four, two hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, I seen footage on this guy. This guy is also pretty pretty fast. I think he run like a four. 4.5, somewhere long up in there. That's still fast for a linebacker. I believe this guy going. I believe this guy ain't gonna take. He got. Let's put this way here. The middle linebacker position is open. It, it's hit. I think I believe gonna be his job to lose. So the Eagles could have a rookie middle linebacker this coming season. So he wanted to grow up real quick. If he goes, if Eagles, if, if the Eagles are thinking the way I'm thinking right now, this guy could want to be in the middle linebacker that can hold down the fourth. Because, like I said, we let our linebacker go to number 53 go. Um, and this guy, he just, just was number 52. So he, he either going to wear number 52 or he's going to wear number 53. One of one, those three dresses he's going to wear. Um, and that's pretty much. The draft 
of those from first to six, the Eagles had eight eight rounds to play with, and they came out on top of ten. So they gained two extra picks with the trade with the um Cowboys and somebody else. And they got the um that the extra pick to go along with the eight that they had. And um so I'm this draft I probably give it like a I give it a B minus because it could have been better if they had um didn't draft Jaden Hurts because see what they did was the second round pick could have been used on a position for need. Instead, they kind of went for not greedy, but more like um, temptation. Because when he drafted Jaden Hurts, he had a smile on his face when he picked up, when he drafted Jaden Hurts. So that means that he got some some, some, trick, some tricks up his mind or up his sleeve of how he's going to use Jaden Hurts out of the backfield, at either at quarterback, running back, or off the line, or maybe be out at wide receiver. We don't know how they're going to use this guy, but he's going to be a matchup nightmare for opposing defenses because they got to figure out ways to stop this guy. You know what I'm saying? But he's going to be a quarterback still. Even the Eagles going to find ways to use him and get him on the field. And I, I, now, and I really can't wait for that to happen. Um, but I am proud to announce, if you guys are quite familiar with it, the Eagles, not the Eagles, but the, the, the New York Giants or the hated team New York Giants had the, the, the 255th pick, which was the last pick in the seventh round of the NFL draft. The Eagles picked them in, um, I don't know why I'm starting to say Eagles. The Giants had drafted Mr. Irrelevant um, Tay Crowder. His real name is the Quavius Tay Crowder. That's his name. He is a 6'3". Linebacker, twenty and thirty-five pounds. So he's he's pretty good, decent guy, and um, he's pretty fast for what I seen on the footage as well. This guy is well, but thing is, I kind of I kind of knocked off a little bit because somewhere along the seventh round, I kind of lost track because because like I said, I fell asleep a little bit when the draft was coming to an end. So this the only pick that that I missed. Because I mentioned it on Facebook who was Mr. Irrelevant. And a guy told me it was Tay Crowder. Linebacker, 6'3", 235 pounds, University of Georgia, where he's from. And um, so, now, now so that's over with, then go to the um, rookie free agent signings. Um, the Eagles had signed a total of 12 guys. That they're gonna use the rest of the year going forward until they get some guys signed and get some guys released. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do it as fast as I can, Paul. So bear with me. Um, with the first, with the first rookie free agent signed, the Eagles signed Raquan Williams, defensive tackle, University of uh, Michigan State, 6'4", 303 pounds. He went undrafted from University of Michigan State. You know what I'm saying? So, I like his size, 64. That's a pretty good size for a defensive tackle. I can't recall the last time the Eagles having a size that they well. Actually, Fletcher Cox is that size. So, this guy probably going to compete for that tackle, for that, that left defensive tackle position. Because um, Fletcher Cox on one side, and this boy Malik Jackson on the second side. But since Malik Jackson got hurt, this guy ain't going to compete for that job. And if he wins that job, they're either going to trade Malik or they're going to release him in contract, one of the two. And the second pick, the Eagles, the Eagles undrafted signee, which is Graylin Arnold. He is a cornerback, defensive back from the University of Baylor Green, um, the University of Baylor Bears. He is on um, 5'10", 180 pounds. He went undrafted, but this guy can also play safety too. So he's gonna be uh, competing for either safety or cornerback. But we even need more help at cornerback, so he might compete for that job more than the safety position. Um, third one, Jill, Jill, Julian Good Jones, 
Julian Good Jones. This guy is a guard from Iowa State. The, the Hawkeyes, 6'5", 309 pounds. He went undrafted as well. Now, I, I, I haven't seen any footage on this guy, so that remains a question mark going forward. Uh, the fourth pick is Michael Warren, the second. He is a running back from University of Cincinnati, the Bearcats, 5'11", 222 pounds. Now, when they said the Eagles were going to get a bigger back, 5'11 is not a big back unless he's wide body. Then, he, then, he, then you can say he's a bigger back. But the 222 pounds, that's kind of light. But when you're 5'11, 222 is, is pretty, pretty much a good, decent amount of uh, weight for a running back, which means he probably goes to the ground. Um, but, but, but 222, that's a, a pretty good, decent weight. Uh, he went undrafted, like I said before. And then to get to the fifth one. The fifth one is Luke. Jeriga, Luke Jeriga, he's a center from the University of Western Michigan, which is kind of like not very far from Michigan State. Um, this guy is 6'4", 298 pounds, and he went undrafted. Now, when you're a center and you're 298 pounds, that's kind of light, which means you can get knocked off the ball at the point of attack when a, when a tackle coming at you. So maybe, maybe that... Maybe he might gain some weight between now and training camp. That that's if they ever be a training camp. They already saying there ain't gonna be no OTAs, so that kills that, and it kills the other one before training camp comes to be. So we we see how that goes. Um, then the other one is Adrian Killens. This guy's a running back also, and he's 5'8", 163 pounds. He went undrafted from the University of Central Florida. Now, I, I haven't seen any footage on that guy as well, so I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work out. So I'm going to put you over and, put, and, and finish, finish the new main picks. I mean, he made undrafted signing that the guy that Eagles had picked up. Uh, Elijah Riley, another running back from the Army. Six feet, 25 pounds. I don't know who that is as well. So like I said, I'm just going down the list so you guys can see and get an idea of who they picked up. As a rookie free agent, uh, then we got one guy named Noah Noah Togia. I think that's his name. Noah Togia, tight end from um, Oregon State, 6'4", 400, I mean, 244 pounds. He went undrafted as well. Um, then we got um, Michael uh, Jacquet the third. Michael Jacquet the third, cornerback. From uh, University of Louisiana, Monroe, I think, think that's what that is. 6'2", 201 pounds. That's not bad either for that size, 6'2". That's, that's tall. And then we got number 10, Dante Olson, another linebacker from University of Montana. He's 6'2", 230, 230, 237 pounds. That's um, a nice size for a linebacker. So they are uh, getting a lot of guys defensive. They could be worked with. Then we got this guy named Masai Bailey. Minnesota Bailey. I think that's the name of Minnesota Bailey. Wide receiver from University of uh, Morgan State. 6'1", 195 pounds. He was undrafted as well. And last but not least, whew, Prince Smith Jr. Another cornerback. University of New Hampshire. 5'10". 185 pounds. All right. That is the, the, the conclusion, and that is the recap of the 2020 NFL Draft. I hope you guys enjoyed my um, video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel, and let me know what, what, what you think, because uh, I might have got a few guys' names wrong. I might have got some information probably wrong, but if you do, let me know what you think. It's very important that I knew because I always can go back and correct what I've done and from what I said. If not, no fall off my balls. So anyway, peace, one love.